Mars One has now publicly revealed how they are pushing ahead with the third round in their astronaut selection process. In this upcoming round, we will be competing in 10 teams of 10 candidates each as we take part in group challenges over a period of five days. We have already begun formulating our groups, each of which is subject to various restrictions in terms of age and national diversity, as well as requiring equal numbers of men and women in each group. We've also recently received study material in preparation for the upcoming challenges, which covers topics such as medicine, physiology, psychology, law, engineering and biology. At the beginning of the next round, all 100 current candidates will be flown to the testing location, which will be in a hotel with accommodation provided for 150 people. During each day of the third round, our teams will compete in a number of challenges consisting of a combination of indoor and outdoor activities, 90% of which have previously been conducted by NASA when studying the best crew composition and training methods for long duration human spaceflight. The challenges will assess, amongst other things, our knowledge, teamwork, problem solving abilities, thoroughness, creativity, clarity of communication, interdependency, and resourcefulness when subject to sensory limitations. Each challenge will be filmed for later review by the selection committee and the day will conclude with a 15 minute debriefing between the candidates and the selection committee. This debriefing will cover areas such as conflict resolution, decision making, team leadership, motivation and candidate morale. We will also be asked at the end of each day to complete a sociogram which outlines our preferences in light of the result of the challenges for who we would like to live and work with on Mars in the future. The selection committee will then take the results of this sociogram in order to construct an individual relationship chart, which is basically a network that maps out all the connections between the different candidates. This will be used alongside observations of our behavior, both inside and outside of the challenges, to select which candidates will no longer remain in the selection process at the end of each day. Though the team that completed the day's challenges most effectively and in the least amount of time will not lose any team members, all of the other teams between them will lose 20 candidates at the end of the first two days and 10 candidates at the end of the following two days. At the end of each day then, after you've lost some candidates, you then have to reformulate your groups so the groups which have lost candidates will then start to merge together to form new groups of 10 candidates for the next day's challenges. Overall, at the end of these five days, there will be 40 candidates remaining in the selection process that will then go on to the fourth round, the isolation challenge. This process was announced during one of the presentations at the 2016 Mars One VIP event in Amsterdam delivered by Dr. Norbert Kraft, Mars One's Chief Medical Officer. If you're interested in watching his full presentation, you can check it out just over there. And you'll also see over there a brief question and answer video with Dr. Kraft, where he elaborates more about the next round. The VIP event also hosted a number of other talks from Mars One's staff and advisors, ranging from technical developments, Martian food production, financial aspects, and the project's overall progress to date. I attended the event along with five of my fellow candidates traveling from as far afield as Dubai and the United States. Whilst there, we had the opportunity to speak at great depth with Mars One's team, and it was particularly interesting networking with the various investors of Mars One who were attending the event at the drinks reception after the talks. I can't give too much away right now beyond Dr. Kraft's talk, which has already been publicly released, but I'll simply say that Mars One has some very exciting things happening that you'll be hearing about in the near future. Whilst the logistics of the next round are being organized over the next six months or so, there is going to be an increasing focus on candidates from around the world meeting either online or in person in order to coordinate our teams. This past month has already seen meetups between Australian candidates Diane McGrath and Rohan Thomas in Queensland, between German candidate Rob Schroeder and Swiss candidate Steve Shield in Germany, as well as between Australian candidate Josh Richards 
and American candidates George Hatcher, Hampton Black, and K. Radzik Warren as he continues his tour around the United States. As well as meeting each other, we've also been active as ever with public outreach, talks, and educational activities. On Mars One's side, they recently released the next part in their Mars 100 video profile series, this time featuring Ukrainian candidate and software engineer Sergei Akimov, which you can check out just over there. And actually, there's been a great deal this past month of educational activity, with talks delivered in schools and universities around the world, with some examples being by Egyptian candidate Mido Salam, South African candidate Adriana Marais, Indian candidate Bupendra Singh, and Spanish candidate Angel Jane. As for some of the many public talks that have gone on, American candidate Maggie Duckworth spoke at the International Space Development Conference in Puerto Rico, Uruguayan candidate Yuri Lopez spoke at a Military Astronautics Academy, and finally in candidate news, I'd like to pass on my congratulations to American candidates Yari and R. Daniel, who have just gotten married. Who knows what interesting team dynamics this could lead to in the next round. Now, as you might have guessed from the title, I've had to merge two of my usual monthly mission updates for this video. This is because I'm due to fly out to California in a few days for an Exoplanets research program, which will be occupying me completely throughout the rest of June and July. Once I get back in August, I'll be putting together a new mission update covering all the developments during this time, which will be released on August 6th. In the meantime though, please continue to send in your comments and questions, as I do read all of them, and I should be able to find hopefully a little bit of time whilst I'm in the States in order to reply to them. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly updates on the Mars One project on the first Saturday of each month, as well as explorations in planetary science, astrophysics, and human spaceflight. This month's feature video is an episode of the excellent Space YouTube show Tomorrow, which features an extended interview with Australian Mars One candidate Josh Richards. If you do have any questions about Mars One, exoplanets, or indeed anything space related, feel free to follow me on Twitter, subscribe, and comment down below to join the conversation.